because in the absence of marriage, there will be no divorce. Yes, you go through the religious processes, the counseling and everything that goes with it. But what about the matters that one would be admissible if you wanted to institute an annulment of that particular marriage? Mm. So that people know, as you're getting married, it's part of what you're being told are these things. So you know this is what ought to happen. Uh, you know, if you're married to another person, you haven't left them, you can't marry this other one. <laughs> you, know that, you know that sort of thing. All those kind of things. Yes. Mm. Mm. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant idea. And in fact, there are, I have been invited to churches many times. There is a particular church in this city that part of their, um, of their premarital counseling class is you you get a lawyer in and and the lawyer talks about the laws of marriage and you know and what happens in case you you know things don't work out uh, of course you know the the idea behind christian marriages is that until death mm. but the reality is you know as in you know uh, the reality as you know is that you know people do break up and so this church has taken a bold move and I've, they've invited me several times to their premarital counseling class mm -hmm. to speak to people about what the law says. How do the couples take marriage. it? I mean, at this point, we're happy, <laughs> we are in love, we're talking about starting off future together. I have to together. wonder whether the, you know, it's just the same way the advice that's given on your wedding day by all these elders. You know, you sometimes, you have to wonder if people are listening, mm. number one, because, you know, I mean, you know, <laughs> love, <laughs> the effect <laughs> of love. <laughs> the aunties who come yeah. and tell you this cake, was <laughs> flower. And there's always the question of, are you listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, but then, point, yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, and then also, of course, then you, you also speak about the processes that are required for, you know, before they can, they can actually, you know, tie the knot. Mm. So, yeah, people are actually taking that conversation at that level before people get married. So mm. that you talk about, you know, the implications. It's not just about divorce, it's the implications, the pros and cons of entering into this legal relationship because it's a legal relationship. It's an institution, it's a relationship, but it's also very much a legal institution. Mm. Mm. Yeah. What are the don'ts of divorce? I think the first don't of divorce is even just the don't get married if you have doubts. Mm -hmm. Because <laughs> many people come to me it's a very interesting thing I'd, you know sometimes there are things you can't possibly foresee mm. of course because life is life but sometimes often you ask somebody you know um what uh, what happened tell me the story and you know and when you say it tell it to me from the beginning many people say you know i saw red flags from the get-go but i ignored them so i think for me the first don't is uh, marriage is very serious. It's very intense. It's very, it, 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 it's very. It can be complicated. So mm. my first don't is not the don't of divorce. It's the don't, don't get married if you have doubts and if you're unsure. Should mm. people get yeah. married when they're in love? <laughs> no, that's not a legal question. No. And I, and I was guess, In fact, I was thinking based on our earlier conversation about you know nobody asks you why. And maybe the reason nobody asks you why is because everyone would say the same answer. The assumption is that uh, you're getting married love. because yes. uh, you're that, because I, Is because that really I the right him. time for you to get married? <laughs> so what should happen? Well, if you're in love... Break you, up first and then get married. No, 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 no. The love that I speak of mm. is the dramatized love which has a lot of euphoria to it. You are not in the right state of mind to actually make such a serious decision. Hmm... But then, you know, in terms of, um, <laughs> you, you know, how far you can control human action, you know, the idea of uh, human liberty and, you know, and freedom is that, uh, you know, there are things you can't tell people not to do. Why not? Because they are human. <laughs> that's, because that's, they are human. In fact, I agree that's with what you're saying. That's the idea behind liberty, dignity. You but know, there are certain rights that are inherent in you. In, and alienable. That, the, but, but you mm. see, the very fact that they're human is the reason why they must be told. Because of the way we are wired, the way we were manufactured, we have certain leanings. We forget things. We change. We are subject <coughs> to all these things. So again, as you correctly put it, you are right, but it is for that very reason that certain things must be brought into a discussion. Because really, why is it, for instance, that we have a legal age? Legal means 
you are allowed to do certain things when you get to that age. Why? Because it, we understand that developmentally, before that point in time, your decision-making process may seem sound to you. Mm. But they are more immediate and the long-term consequences don't actually feature. As you develop and as you grow and as your brain matures, your capacity to take matters beyond the immediate grows with you experientially, but also just the factor of the brain and growing. The neurons in it connecting and doing what they're supposed to do. That's what actually happens. Now, we understand these things and that's why we put that. Now, when it comes to the state of mind you should be in when you make such a lasting decision, because there are very, very few decisions that are as important as that few. Yeah, true. And the consequences of that union are usually very, 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 very dire. Mm. So the thought process that goes into it should be equally serious. True. We, we, we take more time and more caution when, when you want to buy land. And, and land you, you can to sell and buy another one. And then here... Contracted yeah, to somebody but, not but, even but, but, related city, to. City, even at that point when you're making land, there's something else that's also driving your decision making. Yes. We assume that it's a rational decision, but not all, in all cases. It isn't. It isn't. And here we are, that we are saying that because of this moment where you have all this kind of good mm -hmm. feelings about mm -hmm. this person mm -hmm. and you can see a future, a bright future ahead mm. and you have been courting for some time mm -hmm. that you, your mind is still... No, you're not in the right state of mind. In fact, the argument seems to be that is a good time to get married if I were to flip it. You know why? This thing is so serious and there are so many hurdles ahead. Don't think too hard. Just get married. And then as you and move then, along, you will, you, you will deal with those things as you move along. But you need this state of mind to be in to be able to take that step. I mean, Okay. So, Siti, <laughs> is your argument then that we should have like a minimum number of months or years for courtship before the decision is made? Actually, that's where the rights issue comes in. Somebody <laughs> tell you, what do you mean? <laughs> if you need two months, you take two months. I need a month. The truth of the matter is this. If you look at the, the data involving marriages... Those that have been made in haste tend to end quicker than those that have gone through certain processes before people actually make that decision. Actually, last year I participated in a, in a family law conference at Strathmore University, and there were, you know, people from diverse areas of uh, of, of of society speaking about family family law, and um, you know, Hindu marriages have the least instances of divorce. And most Hindu marriages are arranged. Mm. Yeah, so there may be a point. I don't know if you can it, it's legislate taken you it. you all your life to know that you'll get married one day. <laughs> and the person has been determined. You know, I don't know if you can legislate it. But, um, yeah, but, but, that, but, but that's an interesting point. It's, it's an interesting point because, the, yeah, you know, that for me was a big take home. And okay. I, I mean, and... and um, that you know that the arranged the Hindu marriages, which are mostly arranged, not all of them, of mm. course, are arranged, uh, have the least incidences of divorce. Now, I don't know if the research went further to to find out, you know, you know, is it that there are fewer Hindu marriages than, you know, say Christian marriages or customary mm -mm. marriages? Mm -mm. There's but a whole social structure around it, the marriage, how they go about it, how they live, how the family is structured. You see, we are we have been inducted into the Western concept, which some argue are biblical, where you and your wife form a unit. And that nuclear unit is what is fundamental. Mm. Whereas some of the marriages we speak of, yes, you are married, but you are part of a community. So the very institution you have is also part of that community. Maybe the question should be whether any of them would like to get uh, divorced. If given free will. If given the yeah, opportunity to make a decision <laughs> on their own, Actually, you might be surprised yeah. at the answers that you would attached get. Attached to those marriages are also suicide rates. Mm. If mm. you want to look at the data about some of those marriages as well. Yeah. Wakili, mm -hmm. the other don'ts, because you've said the number one is don't if you are in doubt, mm -hmm. don't get into it. Mm -hmm. What else? Um, I think the other don'ts is um, if you are you're already in, in the marriage and uh, you're experiencing trouble, don't do a shotgun divorce. Don't immediately jump into divorce. Mm. Uh, explore counseling. I think we don't use counseling enough <coughs> in this country. Um, I think first explore counseling. I would say use professional counselors 
and um, and use therapy to try and resolve it because the fallout is usually very painful it's very grave there are children involved many people involved so if you can explore counseling explore that if you have you know a community of faith that you can try and approach and see if they can help uh, try that try that first I think rather than um, rush right into it mm. and, 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 and just want to call the whole thing off. So and the Marriage Act actually does recognize that and says, you know, uh, people should explore um, reconciliation, dispute resolution. Should, yeah, dispute resolution, do mediation, uh, seek counseling. The Act actually says that the court can um, adjourn your case for six months require you to go which is to usually, continue living in yeah mm. <laughs> no well to try and explore so like uh, court and mediation can see, actually happen is, in mediation marriage mediation is tricky because you see <laughs> the thing with mediation is that you can only come back with an agreement mm. and you can't come back with an agreement to divorce the law doesn't allow it so it can only come back you can only come back with a decision to get back together or a decision where you say we have tried and we are not able to Let's go on with the divorce. But you're not allowed to come back and say we've we agreed, have agreed to, to divorce. Yeah. We can just come back uh, in a disagreement. You can only come back with a disagreement. We haven't been able to resolve it. So or we have decided uh, to reconcile. But you're allowed. The, there is provision uh, for exploring. And then if that doesn't work, then the court will de dissolve your marriage. I do find that courts are of the, 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 the standard uh, principle is that uh, marriage is voluntary. Mm. It's a voluntary union. You know, you get into it voluntarily, and if you want out, you know, you can't be tied down, you know, if you really, really, you know, if you want out. So, ordinarily, if the courts see that you've tried and it's not working, they'll, 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 they'll release you from that union. There are many, many decisions which say you can't tie down somebody to uh, an, an institution with no relationship. Mm. Okay, the, uh, one read of certain marriages that are literally contractualizing, these are the tenets that we will be following in this union. Mm -hmm. And some even specify the number of years. Mm. So, yes, I see you smile. Do we have such provisions in this country? No. No, we don't. We, you are allowed to get into a prenup, for example. It's uh, this freedom. You decide what you, you, wh what you want to do. Freedom because what if me, I just want to get married for 10 years? You could do it, but what the question is, is can you bring that agreement to the court and say... We were we are contracted for ten years. The contract the is, tenure uh, is over. The, yeah, the you know <laughs> a fraction of Something time. To renew, time has run out. <laughs> mm. Time has run out. We've, we you know uh, um, uh, you know get us out of here. Not quite. The law is not quite there. What the law? The agreement that is that is uh, that is provided in the law, and I haven't seen many people use it. Mm. Maybe uh, because of the way we are socialized, is that you can agree to live apart. You can do a written agreement to live apart for one year, bring it to the court, register it with the court, and then after one year, come back and tell the court we still do not want to get back together. Um, determine determine our situation mm. and, yeah but i haven't seen it used that much people don't usually come and say let's do a separation agreement and register it with the court what do people do they common. just start living people apart, just and live this... apart and then one w then one of them files for for divorce okay where does alimony kick in and for the arguments that come against alimony is that look we came here as two independent parties come together then one has to previously a lot of men fell under the responsibility of alimony but now more recently we're seeing that women also contribute to the payment of it yeah how does that work and why the way the law works is that um um is that either with equality under the constitution either party either either the wife or the husband can be made uh to pay uh, alimony Which or is spousal, what exactly? spousal main, it's spousal maintenance it's to help the other party it's especially in situations where you know one person was really financially dependent on the other on the other one the court can make um, can make orders for you to su keep supporting the other person for a sub certain number of years or until they remarry or you know those sorts of things but let me tell you that in Kenya it's a very it's a, it's usually not a good conversation to have with clients because courts don't give that much money 
it's mm. usually even when the one party is super wealthy most of the decisions have said you know a spouse is not an atm that mm. you come to and yeah. ask for money mm. you know you should be able to support yourself so it's usually when somebody wants alimony it's a, a very a tricky situation which is why i think the best thing to do is if you think you will need alimony especially if one of you decides you're the stay home parent you're mm. the one who is going to stay home and take care of the kids um it might be a good idea to do either a postnup or a, a, a postnuptial agreement or a prenuptial agreement on that aspect because if you wait f to get it from the court i feel like because we are a country where people work so hard everyone works hard everyone is hard working so when you come <laughs> we uh, you know when you come and you're asking that you know i'm unable to work or haven't been able to work in the court wonders the, well, yeah well, you know well. yeah and you know people say oh i hope i get um you know, a, 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 a magistrate, a woman magistrate, or I get a man magistrate, they'll understand. But that magistrate is over overworked. They have so much work. They can't imagine how hard it is to make a living. And you're asking to have, you know, to have some reprieve get it easy. from that. Yeah, but then also uh, alimony or, or, or spousal maintenance is different from child support. Mm -hmm. You know, so in the divorce, you can ask for child for, for alimony. But then if you want, ch ch children are supported. G basically, the courts are of the, ch well, the law requires that you support your children. Mm. So support of children is a much easier <coughs> conversation. It is, uh, you know, the courts will, and will, will require people who don't want to support their children to support their children. But when it comes to spousal maintenance after the marriage has broken down, it's usually a very difficult conversation and people don't get a lot of money from the courts and even when they do it's even hard to enforce mm. i find that you know they basically you know they, and there was a case where you know a man was a woman was ordered to pay a uh, spouse of maintenance to her spouse you can imagine her shock she immediately appealed and um, yeah the court of appeal did, didn't uphold that uh, that order for, mm. for, for maintenance. So uh, spousal maintenance is very tricky. It's a tricky one. Yeah. This child support, mm -hmm. is it shared? Is it a shared responsibility that the two parents are equally contributing to the maintenance, to the support of the children? Yeah, it is. It's shared. It's shared. Uh, the equality of it is nuanced. You know, it's not an absolute, you know, split the child into two sort of uh, situation um, but it's shared uh, every party has to contribute everyone has something. to either yeah e everyone has to contribute something and I find that what courts find uh, um, have found, in practice what happens is that the courts will say you the law is concerned with five things okay. food clothing shelter education and medical medical cover for the children you know there could be holidays entertainment all these other you know things that we do for our kids and uh, that the court will not consider because the law says food clothing shelter education and medical mm. so one parent will be told to take care of certain of those things the other parent will be told to take care of of certain of those things but in the cases yeah. that we read mm -hmm. and those that we see coming out of divorce courts mm -hmm. is where or even it, it's where one parent is going to court seeking that the other parent pays an X amount mm -hmm. to maintain the lifestyle of the children because we were together, these children were used to this, they were going to this kind of school, they were used to having this kind of holidays, they were used to this kind of level of medical care, mm -hmm. this level of education. And you're saying that the other parent is the one to pay to maintain mm -hmm. that standard. Yes. Um, so... Of course, one the par the parent who goes to court is the parent who feels that the that the the status quo is not working in their favor. They've left. They probably have the children. They are housing the children, feeding the children. Then there are all these other bills uh, to be paid. So uh, ordinarily the the courts will say the person living with the children should provide them with food clothing and shelter mm -hmm. okay and then the other person should provide school fees and medical now on the on those issues and sometimes you know because you are taking care of the children if you're the one living with them the court may say let the other person take care of school fees and medical and also give you some money monthly to help you because you know you're with taking care of, of of many bills mm. now the court can't force you to take your children to a certain school
the court cannot force you to keep a medical cover, you know, that you had an expensive medical cover and you have to keep that. But the court will consider, are you punishing the children for the breakdown of the family? If your children were going to a high cost international school and now upon the breakdown of the marriage you're saying, you know, I can only afford a, a, you know, a, a, a public school, the court will think, are you punishing the children? And the court will say, give me your pay slip or give me your, your, your earnings mm -hmm. and let's look and see whether you, you know, if you were able to afford it before. Of course, economies of scale and things adjust a little bit, but the court will try and see whether are you, are you, are you, are you trying to punish the children? So especially with schools, the courts will sometimes say, continue to pay school fees at the children's current school. Mm -hmm. Or they have moved to another school that is almost the same school fees as you, their old school. Uh, continue to pay fees at that school because... Even if the court can't force you to keep your kids in a certain school or provide, main, uh, you know, medical cover for a specific, uh, med in a specific medical cover, you shouldn't also be punishing the children for the breakdown of the relationship. Do you see increasing numbers of divorce in Kenya? Yes, uh, yes, we do, and I think it's not that. Well, my view is that there are many reasons. But uh, sometimes the reason people uh, suggest is that, you know, we just get tired more easily and we move on. But remember, now there are more formal marriages. Many people have to formalize. Traditionally, our grandfathers, our grandmothers didn't leave. They stayed there and wife number three, number four, number five was brought in and there was no divorce. You see, but now the dynamics of society ha has changed. People are saying, no, I'm not going to stay through number wife number two, three, four. And how do we deal with this is we... We is, is, is we dissolve the marriage, okay. you know. You're saying that many traditional societies didn't have divorce. There were, I think, there were divorces, but I, there obviously there were less because. Yeah.